What is up, ladies and gents? Uh, yeah. Welcome to Space Engineers. <laughs> I bet you're wondering why I haven't been making any Gary's Mod videos. Well, that's pretty simple. I'm addicted to Space Engineers. It's simple as that. Um, yeah, today I'm just gonna show you why I love this game, why I've been playing it so much, and why I haven't been messing with the Meggy videos as of late. I have been, I've just lost a whole lot of motivation into making them. No offense, but I can get, just, even I can get burnt out pretty easily in the brain when it comes to crap like that, that and this, and life, if that makes any sense. So, today I'm going to show you a few things that I've been creating. I also have crap on my workshop as well. And probably uh, link a collection of ships that I've been uh, creating. It's in progress, so it's not going to be the full collection. This is going off onto a good start. So I'm doing this just because there's a lot of good frames at the moment, and it's not as laggy as it's supposed to be, because every time I play this game, it does a number of my laptop's temperature, so it just skyrockets and turns into a literal cooker. So I'm going to show you these bad boys here that I have created, one by one, from here to there, pretty much, or there to here. It doesn't matter to me. So uh, I'm just going to start off. Uh, this one is a pretty obvious one. This is this one's actually in the workshop. It has been fully tested. It's not the greatest, but if you want to improve it in the workshop, that's fine by me. This is my variation of a Y-Wing. This is the GDF Y-Wing. This is actually the revamped Mark II because this thing always had fuel problems since this thing uses hydrogen, which is literally ice and it's literally like gasoline in this game. It does have atmospheric thrusters, which are like turbine engines and ion engines, which are uh, mainly for space only. So this is not exactly a bomber Y-Wing because it's a little too small. However, this I classify this pretty much as an interceptor because it's smaller than an average Y-wing. It just looks like this. It's it's a really nice one. I have used this in survival mode, so you can probably easily do that if you have the patience for it. This is pretty much a short-range fighter interceptor. I probably still be will still be using this because why the heck not? All right, next vehicle. This is more utility. This is it's a pretty simple name. It's the GDF Worker. It's a grinder slash welder ship. They've actually used a lot. If I'm sniffing a lot, it's because of allergies. I'm sorry. This I've actually used this a lot in survival and actually built this in survival and just recently gave this thing a paint job. So yeah, this is a really nice build that I made, and has been extremely reliable and easy to produce for quite some time. Alright, this right here is my, uh, I guess one of my first official miners. It's literally just called GDF Miner. Despite how little inventory it has, it is very quick and easy to produce. It's cheap, I can say. This thing is also has good acceleration, like... I've had, the, had this thing go ex with extremely high speeds. So this thing is fairly good as a starting miner. It's like just something to use at the start of a survival or something. I don't know, know any other statistics than that. Okay, now we're kind of going down more the militarized route. This is the my one of my utmost favorite ships. That I have. This is the C-60 Cobra. Multi-purpose fighter. So yeah, this is... This is... This, this, is, this, this is my homeboy. This is my... Uh, pretty much my uh, standard fighter for my uh, faction. It's not as great because there are a lot of exposed parts in it. It's all it's mainly hydrogen, but I've tested this in survival and she c can do pretty well in survival. It has had a lot of combat experience. Despite the ob obvious flaws, this thing is really good at its job. Like it's very mobile, pretty tough to crack, I guess you could say. 
I like to say this is not the best, but it's also not the worst. If that makes any sense. Oh boy. So yeah, this is a very nice fighter. It's fully vanilla, and there are at least a couple variations of this in the workshop. So, uh, I'll probably link the, uh, one of the modded variations in the description. I may not. We'll find out eventually. Alright, next. This is a, actually one of the most recent fighters I've built. This is the C-12 Python Heavy Fighter. This thing may be a bit smaller than the Cobra. But you can tell that this thing's weapons make it a heavy fighter. <laughs> It's not the best. I've had field test this against smaller drones, and I would say, yeah, no, this, this thing is not really good at fighting small drones. This thing is more for fighter v. fighter combat, like similar size to this and this. It's not the best fighter. I still have to do some field testing to this. This one's extremely experimental, especially with the weapons. So, yeah, this thing is will definitely be used in my military when the time comes. Because I do like how I built this. I built this within at least a matter of hours, actually. That's how long I've been playing this game. <laughs> Alright, so next thing on our list. We have two variations of this. This is the... Uh, been wanting to call this thing the T6 Light Tank. Let me, let me confirm that real quick. Yeah, the T6 Battle Tank. Pretty much. This variation has mods. I do have an unmodded version, which I'll probably publish later on, because this is just a simple, easy-to-build tank. It is all heavy armor. However, despite that, it's pretty simple. How you usually get into one of these things is literally this little hole here. You just get into the cockpit. This one's pretty much a light artillery version, which is literally these missiles on the sides. It does use weapon core. It doesn't have any gyroscopes to move it around. Gyroscopes literally, like, if you don't know space engineers, gyroscopes are how things are able to move around, like turn left and right and whatnot, like a normal aircraft would. Let me just pull my nose. I hate my asthma. Ugh. All right, that's pretty much that version. This version just has flamethrowers, but it has the same gun on it. <sighs> yeah. This is pretty much a light tank in a nutshell. Even though it's all heavy armor. This, I actually, is one of my favorites. I used to, uh, if you don't know Captain Jack, I used to have the colors of RWI. I kind of tried to make it a commission out of this for them, but it didn't really go as planned. This is now pretty much a GDF Humvee. Pretty, pretty, it's more for cinematics. If you like doing cinematics on Space Engineers than anything else. I did my best to make this as survival worthy as possible. This thing may not be well used for any type of combat, so to speak, but it is fairly capable with that long range gun that's up there. I'll probably alter it to have like no mods on it at all. I mean the only mods on this are literally this gun, so it's easy to adjust. So yeah, this is a pretty nice Humvee. I do like how I built this. It's a pretty nice Humvee. I love it. It drives pretty well. For how it is. Alright, next vehicle. This is a pretty big boy right here. This is a very big boy right here. This is actually an unmodded variation. This is the G-34 Tactical Insurgent. Tactical Insurgent. Or whatever you, you would say it. This is pretty much a tank, but it's not actually a tank. It's kind of hard to explain, since I'm terrible at explaining things. Um, this thing is pretty much... This is the heavy-duty boy of the GDF, like, rover force. This is still very much experimental, and I will probably publish this variation on the workshop once I blueprinted it. And, uh... This thing will probably be the most popular thing on my on my uh, workshop if I pu advertise it enough. 
yeah, this thing will very much be one of my favorite creations, despite the fact it is very, it's all heavy armor, it's very sluggish, especially in the tires. It's kind of hard to steer unless you use the gyroscopes. It does have a couple thrusters to make it go a little faster than it should. Other than that, it's very tough and very hard to kill. And I do love how I got this thing built. Because she is a beast on the battlefield. Alright, next vehicle. This is actually one of the most popular uh, rovers on my workshop. This is the v this is a pretty simple, easy to build rover. A starter rover, you can say. This is the V-30 Workhorse. Probably one of the first rovers I ever built in survival. And I'd like to say this thing is a very strong and very nice rover. This is pretty well made. It has a quite a bit of cargo on board. Let me check real quick. This thing has at least cargo. Two me medium cargo containers for, like, easy, like, if you want to mine with, like, a mining drill, you could you easily use this to, like, carry a lot of cargo for something of small size. And it can defend itself with this Gatling gun on the top. And it can do good with random terrain, with good terrain. A rough terrain, I should say. However, it is prone to losing the cockpit, which is fairly easy to uh, replace. This is a DLC cockpit, so you have to pay for it. Oh, this ain't good. Um, okay, anyways, uh, let me fix this real quick. I, this planet has a lot of problems with uh, lightning and whatnot. This is the... Uh, this is one of my other more powerful rovers, actually. That's a kind of embarrassing, actually, that it got struck by lightning for no reason. This is the Bulldog. Well, while I fix this real quick. This is the GDF Bulldog. It is a ca another cargo rover. It's a little more of a uh, heavier variation of the cargo rover of the V-30, but it has the same inventory space as the V-30. Bulldog is pretty much a much more capable all-terrain vehicle. It is very much... It's more utility. It's more like escort support than anything else. It, I have done my best to make this survival as possible. I make everything survival as possible, if I'm honest with you. All I can say is this rover is very much capable of handling itself on multiple terrains. And I can say with a load of confidence that this thing is very strong. It is very durable. I have field tested this multiple times. I will probably publish this once again on another time. All I can say is that it's, it's a good rover. I hope people love it when it's published. Because it actually just looks absolutely breathtaking. Alright, next rover. This thing is the Bison Troop Transport. Once again, this thing is a more cinematic r rover. It's not really built right when it comes to survival, but once again, I did make typical space engineers, right? Typical space engineers. Anyways, this thing is... Yeah, self-explanatory. This thing is a troop troop transport. This carries troops on the battlefield. I'll probably use this in a cinematic at some point, because I'm a special space engineer, so I've been wanting to do that, because Captain Jack does it a lot. And I kind of want to give it a try myself. I don't have, I don't believe I've talked that fast for a while. So this variation, I did have to add a turret, because it used to be very much unarmed. And it's probably a lot more exposed on the top, but still, it's a good rover. And I like to say this is probably the best rover I've built. For all terrain wise and it is pretty fast as well she's a pretty fast boy she's a pretty fast boy okay i'm literally losing my sanity levels